Hello all and welcome to Get Your Masters for Less. Um, this is a deep dive into industry credits, ACS and CSP with IT Masters and CSU. Um, tonight you've got your host Chantal Hale, that's me. I'm the IT Masters CEO and Education Manager and we've also got Anna Lee, our Eligibility Officer. Hi everyone. Uh, uh, we're going to do something a bit different this webinar. So uh, all of you should be here because you've got some interest in studying your master's or a graduate qualification with Charles Sturt University and IT Masters. But today is all about how you can make your journey shorter, cheaper and easier. So we're hoping that this should take about 30 minutes to go through the presentation. And then at the end, we'll have some time for questions. So don't forget, you can put your questions in the Q&A section and we'll make sure we get to them at the end or even throughout the webinar if that becomes necessary. Um, so as I said, I'm the CEO at IoT Masters um, and I've got information on the subjects that you might be studying and how the courses are laid out. And Anna is our, our, our eligibility expert and she'll provide you with all the details you might need to go ahead with studying with us. Um, and to make sure that you get the most out of your industry qualifications and credits, et cetera. Um, so before I kick off properly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we are presenting, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to the traditional owners, past, present and future. Um, and let's, let's kick off. So, the first thing we're going to do is talk about why we want to help you shorten your course and save money. Um, and we really do like to think we have a student first attitude at IT Masters. So we really think that um, our courses are the, you know, uh, a positive experience for our students, not only because we make sure that small things like your application and your advice on admissions and, and the sales team for how to best structure your course, uh, you know, start you off on the right track. Um, but we also have ongoing interest in your success as you study through us. And there is an admin team that you can call during work hours or email at any time who will do their best to assist and can usually help with your specific problems or issues at that stage rather than calling a, you know, a university student help office uh, where you, they don't have your specific information as easy to find. So our students are on the main people who have busy lives and are often at a strong point in their careers. They're often juggling families and work and everything else that life throws at you. So our aim is to help you through that so that, you, that your study is a rewarding experience and not just what you do to get ahead. Um, on average, 27% of our enrolments in any intake session have already completed at least one course with us. So that covers not only people who go from grad cert to a master's, but quite a few who study in multiple subject areas over the course of their career. Obviously, all of our subject areas are IT related, but they are varied in their specific focus. Um, so I'll get Anna to talk a little bit about pathways into study. Thanks, Chantal. Okay, so pathways into studying. So we, um, so you want to get a postgraduate qualification, uh, but you're not too sure where to start. Uh, you may have not studied at university level before, or it's been a number of years since you've last studied. Uh, so at IT Masters, we have a number of ways that you can enter into postgraduate study. Um, our masters are made up of 12 subjects, but as you can see from this handy chart here, uh, you can start with four subjects in the graduate certificate and then study the remaining eight subjects to accumulate 12 subjects total uh, in the master's. And when you move on to the master's, you do receive a 10% alumni discount. Um, and that's that's um, if you go down that pathway, you'll receive two qualifications for the price of one. This also means you can start studying at a postgraduate level without a bachelor's degree and get a university qualification in around seven months, which you can then have on your resume before continuing to study your remaining subjects to attain your master's. Uh, so four of our graduate certificates are open for the Commonwealth Supported Places this year, which will save you quite a bit of money and uh, we'll cover that shortly. Great. Um so a little bit about our courses. 
uh, they're broken into academic subjects and industry subjects. So what that means is the academic subjects are created and taught by CSU academics. Um, and we're aiming to give you an academic grounding with those in the topics that you're learning. So they can be technical and hands-on, but they generally have just a bit more of an academic bent than the industry subjects. And then we have the other half of the courses you'll study are uh, the industry subjects. And those are written and delivered by IT Masters industry professionals. Um, and they have the industry professionals leading them. So they're often based on industry certifications like the CASSP or the Certified Ethical Hacker. And the main aim of these subjects is to tie the academic knowledge that students have received into real world practice and learn how to apply this knowledge. So most IT Masters mentors, um, what you, know, you might call a subject coordinator or a lecturer, but we call them mentors, they work in the industry and they teach of an evening so they can not only tell you how to do things, but also how things are done in the industry. Um, as you see, we offer courses in a wide range of subject areas, from cybersecurity to an MBA. All of our courses have that IT focus that I mentioned. So project management is focused on IT project management, and our MBA is unique in that it has a core of management subjects, and then the ability to specialise in the IT domain of your course. So you could study the MBA um, in computing, but it's also got a cybersecurity, you know, a specialisation attached to it. Um, our cybersecurity courses are highly valued and we know, for example, that the ASD and the federal government ask us each year to promote their graduate programs to our students. For those of you who may be in another industry now, the Graduate Certificate of Computing is designed to allow you to sample IT subjects so that you can then transition into an IT career or go on to further study in a specific field. There is also an internship option available in this course, but it is by no means mandatory. And network and cloud computing courses have a number of subjects focused on certifications in the AWS, Azure or VMware areas. Um, and there are certifications embedded into a lot of our subjects so that you can find something relevant, but also new and exciting that hopefully you find interesting. Okay, thanks Chantal. So there are ways to shorten your study with credits. So there are four ways to shorten your study. Uh, so many, uh, so there's, um, you can shorten your studies through industry certifications. Um, if you sit to those exams, you may be able to receive subject credits. So for example, if you have, if you're a certified ethical hacker through EC Council, uh, you should be eligible to receive credit for the subject ITE 516, which is our hacking countermeasure subject so that experts in this area don't need to study this study something they already know. Uh, you can also another way to receive credit is if you've already um, done some postgraduate studies. Um, so we assess this based on the to ensure that the subject covers at least 80% of the content uh, that's similar to ours to be eligible for credit. Uh, while we don't give credit based on previous work experience, if you are an ACS member and apply to have your level of experience assessed, uh, you can get two subject credits uh, if you're an ACS certified professional or an ACS certified cyber security professional, or one subject credit if you're an ACS certified technologist or an ACS certified cyber security technologist. Was quite a mouthful. Um, the last way to also gain credit into um, our IT Masters course is to sit and pass three of the IT Masters free short courses online, which will give you uh, one subject credit towards our industry elective. Uh, we also um, have a free online short course starting tomorrow. It's a new one called Practical AI for non coders if you are interested. Um, I'll put the link in shortly after this chat. Uh, so just keep in mind as well, the maximum level of credit you can receive is no more than 50% of any course. And you can re receive credit at any time in your studies up until graduation. So if you are planning or working towards your credit or planning to sit an industry certification, you can always do that while you're studying um, all the way up to when you uh, graduate as well. Great. 
So here are our list of industry certifications. So if you've been in the IT industry maybe for a few years now, or as part of your job, you may have a CIS or a Cisco certification, or maybe like some of our students, you have quite the collection um, and have a whole pile of certifications. Uh, it's easy to have them assessed by our team. Uh, you can just simply show us the certificate and we can take a look up in our database to see if you're eligible for credits. Um, if it's one that we haven't encountered before, we would look at the details and match it against some of our courses uh, for fit and get them formally recognised. Of course, not all certifications qualify. There are a number that are considered below postgraduate standards and they don't cover similar enough subject details to be eligible. Uh, the only way to be sure is to fill out our eligibility form and we can check it out for you. Uh, we've also conducted over 2000 individual uh, assessments in the last 12 months. So if you don't see yours up there, uh, feel free to reach out and we can um, personalize your credits there as well. All right, great. Um, and so one of the other ways that I think we'd already mentioned, but I'll go into a little bit more detail, is ACS certification. Um, so it's similar in principle to getting your CPA if you're an accountant. It's recognised by the Professional Standards Council who regulate the ACS and ensuring they establish and uphold professional frameworks and standards for all eligible members. So the process is based around your resume in an interview. Uh, Sophia is a standardised process for assessing the level at which your job roles have set um, and the interview process concludes with awarding either a certified professional or a certified technologist at the end. Um, so some years ago we entered into a formal arrangement with the ACS and Charles Sturt that allows certified professionals to have up to two industry subject credits and certified technologies, technologists to get one industry subject credit. So in practical terms, what that means is for a $720 investment, about $375 for membership and $345 for the certification, you can get a benefit of between $3,600 and $7,200 in, in core savings. So that's a return of investment on investment of 500 or 1,000%. Um, so that's outside of any other benefits of being an ACS member. There are professional development seminars, short courses, a host of events, plus the ability to meet and network with your peers. All up, it's a really sensible investment at every level. Um, and you may also not know that the Master of Cybersecurity is ACS accredited. That means they have taken a similar approach to that they do with personal certification to our course and are given it their tick of approval. It is one of only three courses accredited in cybersecurity at this level. Um, another way that you can get credit uh, is previous postgraduate level study. Um, so this is assessed for subject credits. It requires an 80% match of your previous studies. So you would have a, you know, a subject that you've studied at university at a different university that you think matches one of our subjects. And we would see if 80% of our learning outcomes are covered in that subject and that it's at the appropriate level. Um, this is done on a case by case basis and we can't guarantee anything, but if you do have questions about that, you can send it through to eligibility and, and they can have a look at it before you sign up. Um, next up, and as we mentioned, the last way we get give credit into our courses is passing three of our ITM short courses for one industry elective credit. It's unspecified, so it doesn't say what it's about. It is just an elective credit. We have 50 short courses, or over 50 short courses to choose from, and they're available for you to sit now. They don't have start or end dates, and you study entirely in your own time, and you don't have to wait for the next live short course. Although, as Anna mentioned, we do have the practical AI for non-coders that is coming in the next few weeks. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, sorry. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a terrific blend of dive into the technology and a discussion about what is happening in the real world with a sudden explosion in AI applications. Um, so definitely have a look at that one. But we also find this is a really good way to get to know what studying with us might be like. Um, the teachers for most of the short courses are real IT Masters mentors. A lot of the time, the content in these short courses is taken directly from the subjects. It doesn't have a, a robust assessment like you will find in our subjects. It is just multiple choice, but it is a good way to see if 
the subjects are a level that you can study. And just to see if you would enjoy studying online because we have the online webinars, there's, you know, things, activities you can complete online just to see how it fits in with your specific study requirements. Thanks, Chantal. Uh, so the Commonwealth Supported Placements. So here are um, our graduate certificates that are uh, part of the Commonwealth Supported Programs. Uh, which includes cybersecurity, cloud computing and virtualization, network systems admin, as well as the computing career transition. So the IT subjects here, um, with the Commonwealth supported placements, the IT subjects, usually they are $3,600 for full fee, but with the Commonwealth supported placement uh, subsidy, you are uh, paying out of pocket $1,036 per subject, uh, which is a 71% discount there. And if you were looking at doing any of the management or marketing subjects in the grad search in computing career transition, that will reduce from $3,600 down to $1,828 per subject, which is a 47% discount. Um, if you were looking at doing an IT subject grad certificate course only, uh, that would uh, cost you, uh, full fee usually will cost $14,400 um, and your out of pocket for a CSP subsidy will be $4,144. Great. Hmm. Uh, so planning the most cost-effective masters. Uh, so the grad certificate is made up of four subjects, while the masters have 12 subjects. Uh, but if you choose your subjects in the grad certificate, uh, carefully those four subjects will then be used towards your masters. Okay, so you can uh, enter without a degree and have the grad cert embedded in the masters. So if you start with a CSP grad cert and focus on an articulated course, uh, you'll get the full benefit from the subject studied, uh, but you also have the option to do two grad certificates um, and utilize the CSP funding um, if you're able to, or you can uh, save your credits and apply them all at once once you've completed your CSP courses towards your master's there. Uh, so the Lomadi discount comes uh, only after the CSP courses, um, and keep in mind you can and use a maximum of 50% subject credit from any source as long as they fit within the course structure. Um, and you can only use a credit once in the accredited set courses. Uh, if you do have any questions and you do find, um, you know, there's a, like if you're going through, if you have a um, whatever your plan is, you can always reach out to one of us and we can definitely discuss and make a personalized plan there based on your subject credits. Um, and your um, your lifestyle as well. Our admin team would love mm. to hear from you. We would much prefer you ask a million questions than make the wrong decision and have to study an extra subject or something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here are some examples that um, we can take a look at. So for the first example, if you are an ACS certified technologist, let's say, and have done a CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus certification, that there will already grant you two subject credits, okay? Uh, you can then enroll into a grad cert in computing career transition for the first session, and then enroll into a grad cert, let's say cybersecurity, uh, for the next two sessions, completing all up eight subjects across the, uh, the CSP courses. Uh, you then enroll into the Masters of Cybersecurity and apply the certifications, the two credits, uh, which means you're essentially taking five sessions to complete at two subjects per session. Um, that will take you around 18 months and will save you 65% on the full course fee there. Uh, so another example, the second example we can look at is if you are an ACS certified technologist and have a CIS certification, um, you'll be looking at attaining, so the ACS certified, certified technologist will give you one subject credit and CIS will normally give you three subject credits. Uh, you do the grad cert in cybersecurity for the first session, completing four subjects under the CSP grant. Um, and then you enroll into the masters and use the credits that you've attained from ACS certified technologists and CIS, which leaves you four subject credits to pay full fee, 
So the time taken is about four sessions to complete, which is around 15 months, uh, completing two subjects per session, which saves you around 60% going down that pathway. So another example you can take a look at is if you're, let's say you're an ACS uh, certified professional and you have a CIS certification and a certified ethical hacking uh, certification. Uh, that means you have a total of six subject credits. You decide to enroll into the grad cert in cybersecurity and complete four subjects under the CSP funding. Uh, and then you enroll into the masters of cybersecurity and uh, apply the six subject credits, which essentially leaves you only two full fee subjects to complete the masters after that. So the time taken in this route is three sessions, which is around a year. Uh, at, uh, with you completing two subjects per session, saving you about 75% if you were going down this pathway as well. And we know that all of these can look a little daunting or confusing. So obviously I'll reiterate, call us if you have any questions or send us an email and we can talk about the plans. We also, um, uh, fees may go up slightly for next year, but those 10% alumni discounts will still be there. And we're hoping to still have Commonwealth supported places. So, like, you know, there, there will still be a massive saving if you um, go about any of these sort of routes to get to your master's. And you don't have to have any of the industry credits to get cheaper master's. Um, when we talked about earlier, I just wanted to mention quickly, um, just to reiterate, we talked about earlier with the 50% credit into any course. So, and that's a government requirement. We can't give you more than 50% credit into a course, but with the articulated courses, you can get, it doesn't count as credit when you um, have credit in those areas. Yeah. So um, if you complete a graduate certificate in cybersecurity and move into the masters of cybersecurity, your subjects won't count as credit. Credits there, they will count as, as if you've subject studied them in the masters. Masters, yep. Which will still leave you up to six subject credits if you were looking at credits as well. As well. Yeah. Um, and somebody did just quickly ask: Is there any credits or savings if you have a cert for in cybersec? Probably not. Um, I mean, we can get to the questions later, but I just wanted to, as we were talking about credits, uh, Cert 4 is generally not counted because it is not at a high enough level for master's level credit. Mm. But there are lots of other ways, as we showed, that you can get credit into the course. So lastly, I thought I'd quickly talk about fees and funding options. Um, if you are an Australian citizen, you will be eligible for fee help. This is an interest-free government loan that does go up by CPI, but it is still um, a pretty good option for most people who are studying. You pay it back at tax time, depending on your um, how much you get paid. Um, so you can pay all your subject fees up front, and then you don't have to incur that, incur that fee help debt. Um, you can pay some up front and use a fee help loan for the rest, or you can use a fee help loan for all of them and pay them back at tax time, as we said. Um, and credit can be applied at any court, at point during your study. As Anna said, uh, often people are studying industry certifications as they study with us, and then they get to the end and say, okay, now I want to apply this credit. Um, and for students who are getting Commonwealth supported places, it is HEX help, which is much the same as fee help, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> I think on that um, note as well, if you are planning to set any industry certifications, do let us know um, so that we can pre-plan um, your subject enrolments just to make sure everything fits within the course uh, so you can graduate uh, smoothly as well. Mm. Yeah, and that's a that's a big one because uh, sometimes subjects aren't offered every single session and we can tell you the best order to sit things in. You know, our admin team, they love to be given calls with with curly questions about credit etc um or even easy to answer but you can't find the answer immediately questions so call us if you have any questions or email us mm. so the next steps are to read the faq we've created on the commonwealth supported places fill out your eligibility um and you'll get a call from anna who will tell you you know if you're eligible um and what credit you might be eligible for 
Hmm. And email us. You can email us at eligibility at itmasters.edu.au or admin at itmasters.edu.au or call us on 1300 885 685 during Melbourne business hours. And we are happy to help you with these questions that you might have. Um, and we are now at the questions portion of the evening. And so I will go with the one question that we have right now. Who does the ACS assessments? It's ACS. Um, there are people from ACS who are designated to do those assessments. Um, they're, yeah, they're professionals in the area. They know what they're doing. But it, it does involve sending through your resume, any qualifications, information like that. I hope that answered that question, Jonathan. And now we're hoping to get a few more questions. I know it was um, maybe a lot of information thrown at you, um, but we are here to answer any questions you might have. And Anna is our eligibility expert, so she has so much knowledge. I've just popped in the AI um, very short courses as well. Jonathan okay, so asks, how much time per week approximately per subject do you think it is? So the university recommends it's like nine to 11 hours per subject per week, but this is very variable depending on your skill and knowledge and also, you know, how effectively you study. Um, if you are a cybersecurity expert and you study uh, cybersecurity fundamentals, you are not going to need that many hours. Also, it does go up during assessment time, but down during um, not assessment time. Hmm. There is about 10 weeks of material per subject, by the way, for that one. Sean's asked, what would be the time commitment for the short courses? So the short courses run for about four weeks. They have a much lower time commitment than the um, the subjects themselves because they are just a taster they have no you know in-depth activities it, it would just be a few hours per week for that one but also those are free to join you don't get in any trouble or um any uh annoying harassment if you just join in and then don't submit a single thing so you can join in you know register for the webinars attend the live ones for the AI short course if you want to or don't if you don't um and then see if you like it um so when studying with us, just to reiterate on the, oh, question, what are the assessments, exams only, or is there project work, long written assessments, thesis style? Okay, so this is right in my wheelhouse. So it's a good question to ask me. Um, the assessments are a range of different types of assessments. There might be essays, there might be even presentations or labs. And some of our subjects do have exams, but not all of them. Um, when I said that the subjects, are, some of them are based on industry qualifications, they aren't the same as the industry exams that just have multiple choice exams because that wouldn't be a master's level subject. Texa would have, you know, have our registration quite right quick if we just gave you a multiple choice level exam and that was it. There are some project assessments, but they're not thesis style. Because this is a master's by coursework, each subject is set on its own and doesn't lead into the next subject. And each, you know, each subject lasts for a few months. Uh, Sabaris so asks, what programs are eligible for us international students to study online? So I guess that also depends on your student visa as well there, Bara. Um, so if you would like, I, you can definitely reach out to me. I can have a look at your personal circumstance and assess and go from there as well. And if you're an international student who's just overseas and wants to study online with Charles Sturt University overseas, I think it's, it's a lot simpler. Hmm. Um, they're all available, but. It just depends on your availability. Uh, 
Um, to reiterate, to go in more detail about the types of assessments, if you want more information on that, we can send you information on the assessments that you would be studying in your first subject if you'd like to see what they might be. Mm -hmm. For our first subject in most of our masters, ITR 581, which is included in many of our like cybersecurity masters, et cetera. That is cybersecurity fundamentals. That is a case study that builds off each other for each assessment and each assessment um, where you're given a, a real world sort of example and you have to answer questions that you might in, the re in, in a real job about cybersecurity. So we try to make them practical where possible, but it's not always possible because at a university master's level, you have to demonstrate knowledge. Anna's done a million webinars with me, so she knows I make this joke all the time, but I wish I had background music so that you guys knew I was still here ready to answer questions, but um, that there's no questions currently on our screen. Put your hand up if you'd like to just be given the mic. Yes, sure. Hmm. Um, my question was just about like if we haven't studied an undergrad, um, what's the best way to set ourselves up for success, like getting into studying? So this is uh, one where the short courses can be valuable here so that you can sort of have a little bit of experience, you know, studying, but also at the same stage, we give you orientation information on how you should start studying. I've got the orientation webinar next week on Wednesday for the new students. Um, and our admin support team are always here to help you with those, as along with CSU's student page, which does have a lot of information about how to study, because we know that not everyone has studied at a postgraduate level or even an undergraduate level, and not everyone knows how to write an essay or to approach an assessment question. Um, but one of the big things here is you can study one subject at a time if you'd like, and sometimes that's a good way to start if you're not sure about how you're going to go and you want to just ease into it a little bit. So starting with one subject and then moving on to two subjects if you feel comfortable or staying with one subject if you're, you know, busy and you've got kids and a partner and things to do that don't allow for two subjects at a time. I think Jonathan's asked, uh, what are the benefits of obtaining a master's? Is it just for career prospects? I mean, that's the, the big one. We've mm -hmm. found that people with the studies have shown people with a master's do earn more and are more likely to get promoted and new job offers. But we also really hope that our masters with their practical knowledge and their academic knowledge can really help advance your information in the, the areas that you're working in um, and that they're not just, here's some information, I'll never use it again. When is the next intake after July? That's September. We have what we call our... Um, <sighs> Our, our sh smaller intakes, I suppose. Smaller intakes, yeah. yes. Um, and they only have a limited subject availability in those intakes. Um, but that one is open for September. And then the next main intake is in November because uh, these courses run in a sort of a trimester function where you we generally have students studying all throughout the year because it's not like when you studied your undergrad and just half the year you were basically on holidays. Although you can take leave anytime you want to as you study. I wish there was a little um, 
thing saying if someone was typing a question so that I don't miss out on somebody who's just typing something. Hmm. So if applications, we were, oh, sorry, go ahead. If we're like halfway through a subject and we had to go away for an extended period of time with work, what, how would that work? So there are a few options here. Uh, when you study a subject with CSU, you uh, the, there is a date called census date. Um, and if you unenroll before that date, you pay no fees, it's fine. It's like you were never enrolled. If you are still in the subject after census date and you're going away for an extended period of time with work, there are a few options for what you can do because we understand work happens. Extensions are possible. And there is, at IT Masters, we give extensions, short extensions with, you know, no evidence is fine. And you can get one seven day, no reason given whatever, you know, I just need an extension per session that you study with us. You can also get extensions with documentation for longer when you say, listen, I'm away with work. I cannot do this work at this moment. I need a longer extension. Those are on a case by case basis and it really does depend on the situation because often we have students who are studying away from home at work who just study at night time because they're like, well, I don't know anyone here anyway, I may as well study. So that is definitely one of the option. Worst case scenario, you can get an approved withdrawal, which still has the fees attached to it, but it doesn't have a fail on your transcript, but that is only if you can't get the assessments done within the extension timeframes. And we can be quite flexible. If you have an exam that you can't sit, we can offer to offer a deferred exam, although that it is there are timeframes on that one. So it is something that you discuss with the admin officers and get the best answer that works for you. Uh, Safaris so asked, <clears throat> does the master's have a minimum, minimum and maximum time frame? Uh, how many hours can I spend per week considering I have a full-time job? So, um, yeah, it really depends on how many subjects you're studying. A lot of people choose to study one subject if they're working full-time and have other commitments but it really does depend on you. Um, the master's doesn't, there's no minimum time to be able to sit the master's, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, limited by how many subjects you can sit at once. Maximum time, Anna, what's that one? That's. I think maximum you can complete the course within, I think, a year. You do full-time study, which is four subject credits. Um, and minimum yep. is a minimum of one subject enrollment per session. But if for any reason you do need to take leave, you can always pause your study before census state, that, like Chantal has mentioned, um, for whatever reason it may be. Hmm. Yeah, okay. so um, you can go on approved leave of absence. You get up to four unspecified approved leaves of absence in your course. And then after that, you can apply for more. So for instance, you are just busy and you don't want to study for a few sessions and you apply for approved leave of absence. And then, you know, a year later, you have a new baby and you need, and you haven't got any approved leaves, leaves of absence left. So you contact us and we contact the course coordinator and you can get one approved because obviously you just don't have time to study at that stage. We may be end, heading to the final part of the questions. As I said, you can put your hand up if you'd like to um, request the mic. If you have a question that's easier asked out loud.
I think it definitely is reaching the end of the question section. Um, Anna, did you have anything else to add? Um, nope, that's it for me. <laughs> um, and I will say yet again, even though you're probably bored of me saying it, if you have any questions or any plans that you're not quite sure how to how to work your um, how to work your best course of action, how to do industry credits, how to make sure that you get the right subjects you want quickly please contact us and we'll sort it out all right thanks for your time everyone um if you have any questions that you think of as soon as we uh, get to the end of this and we've, we've finished it up please feel free to email us or call us because we'd love to help you um and we are here to answer your questions thank you anna for uh running those pages that i didn't uh, have the full understanding of and thank you for everyone who sat through and listened to us tell you about our courses thanks everyone have a lovely evening bye all